Hi guys, welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at SPA technology, atoms, molecules and organisms. Now I've been in the SPA industry for many years and I've seen so much code redundancy. It costs time, it costs money and when you want to edit your SPA it can be incredibly expensive. So now we need to save time, save money and stop everyone pulling their hairs out of their head. So guess what? You can hit that like button, you can hit that subscribe button, ding dong that bell, and don't forget you can join the avalex.co.uk mailing list. Let's get on with the video. So what are atoms, molecules, and organisms? Atoms are the smallest part of your interface. So the smallest part of your interface could be a button, it could be text, such as heading text, and it can also be input. Fantastic. Then we have molecules. Now molecules are larger. So atoms were more based around like HTML elements like input and button. Molecules are where you combine atoms together. So in other words, if I was to take my text heading, my input and my button, everything would come together in this molecule known as the search component and my search component now has multiple atomic elements that make it up. Molecules can't have other molecules embedded in them. Molecules can only embed atomic elements inside of them. Now the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is organisms. Organisms are a little bit larger. They usually compose multiple molecules. Next up we have organisms. Organisms is where we can combine multiple molecules together and you can also embed atoms into an organism as well. So it goes up that chain of command. The molecule can only embed atomic elements, organisms can embed molecular sort of elements and also the atomic elements as well. This could be something summed up as a header for example. Now a header may have my atomic logo, for example. I may have a molecule in there for navigation and my navigation is made up of atomic sort of link elements. And then I also have another molecule called search and I combine this together to make an organism. So organisms can contain atomic type elements and also molecular type elements. Combine them together, that's what you got. And then obviously we can start to, we, we lose that sort of whole ethos when we get to the higher order components, so the routing components. Whenever you have a router that points to a route and you say render that component for that route, that's the higher order component. It's of higher importance, that's what that means. On the template level, on the, on the higher order structure level, um, that is where we're not going with this whole atoms, you know, molecules and whatever. Those things, we can combine organisms and molecules. Normally you wouldn't bother with atoms, whatever it is, to display to the user what you wanted to display. So again, we, all we're doing is we're making sure that the fundamental building blocks of our UI are atomized, molecularized, and also organisms as well, so that we can understand how things grow and we really build out that pattern for scalability, flexibility, and removing code redundancy. Now, many developers may be going, well, that's stupid. Why, why, why do I want to create a component for a button or a little like button or a little icon, a little play icon? Why would I want to go that atomic? Molecules, yeah, sure, we make those. But an organism, sure, you make those. You make header, foot, and components, right? But why, why atomic? That's, that's the main central point that causes contention. The reason is most developers are lazy. They want to build applications quickly, which yes, you can do without this model. However, you can't edit the code very easily and you're creating something called code redundancy. And I've seen this hideous thing that I see all the time in SPA development. Someone's rushed through their work they've finished a component and they're like, yep, done. They're done for the day. You're not done, right? Okay, you haven't finished because the first version of your code isn't normally the right one. Plus, what is code redundancy? Well, if I've got all these different buttons all over the place and if I've got 
all these different like buttons, what am I doing? I'm actually causing myself more work, even though it's a little bit more work initially, I mean a tiny bit more work initially. You're costing yourself later on down the line when the manager goes to you, oh, can you edit that little icon? Oh, can you edit that little like button? Oh, how about the button that's across the entire interface? And you go, oh, okay. And then because you've copied the code in multiple molecular type components, we all write molecular type components, that's not really where the contention is, it's mostly atomic, that when you do that, you go, oh, darn, I've replicated, you've created what's called code redundancy, especially in SPA technology. The whole point about this is breaking the interface down so that it's easily editable afterwards. So an hour's job turns into half an hour or even five minutes. Now, the atomic bit is the bit that people miss. You misunderstand how easy that will make your life, how consistent that will make your life. And on top of the consistency, what you'll actually get is faster editing times, faster manipulation, easier to understand components. And if you break the logic down correctly, you shouldn't include too much logic in an atomized component. You, that should be more molecular level. Your atomized components should really be based on presentation. They should be very basic in how they're implemented. That's something that's really important. Don't embed too much logic in atomized components. That's also potentially a big mistake because this thing can be used in multiple places and it may have, for example, like a button, it could be an add to cart button or a, this type of button. Okay, and we can create a molecule or we can create something else instead of trying to get rid of the presentational logic that comes with this. And the reason why this is so valuable, right, it's really valuable, is the fact that it lets me edit quickly. It keeps redundancy, code redundancy down, where you're not looking at this thing going, I've hard coded every value in here. Right, I've hard coded every value. I've got to go through all these components I've got to make sure the consistency is, and you know that if you haven't done it properly, because when you edit something, they'll say, all oh, this is broken, or all oh, this hasn't been updated here. You've updated it here, but there's another one over here, and there's another one over here, and there's another page over there, and you haven't updated it. When you could have just done it in one shot. That is the problem. Please adopt this methodology. I guarantee you it's a little bit more, but you'll get rid of that code redundancy you save time. Time is money. And the happier your manager is, usually the happier you'll be. So I'm trying to keep them happy, you happy, SPA technology happy, and utilizing that as the core of what we're trying to do. And you will notice that, all right, if you're creating a mum and pop website, you know, you're going to try and do a cheeky one. You shouldn't, but people do. And, you know, when you get onto larger scale applications, this becomes more prominent. Where I've seen some very large companies with code redundancy out the eyeballs. I'm literally deleting thousands of lines of code, entire components that are completely redundant in their nature. Just how they're written is redundant. And if you change that large component in a very small way, that it's been so lazy that they literally copied a component that's literally 1500 lines long, which is ridiculous for a component, copied it and then slightly modified it. I mean, it's been that bad. And so this structure will prevent all of that. This structure will make sure that you've broken your interface down correctly, given a single use case for that component. Now that use case can be rendered slightly differently, function slightly differently and you know what those functionalities are because you've broken it down. That way the product owner, the person who's managing this project can say, this component does this, 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 and this. And you know, well, I've got atomized components. I've got these things here. It's easily modifiable. It's easily editable. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you get tons of knowledge from it. And I hope that you want to stick with us. So hit that subscribe button, ding dong that bell, give us a big thumbs up. We've got loads of free content. And guess what? I've got more videos for you right here.